as parents, we want to give our children exactly what they need in order to be the best they can be in this world. We, want, we all want to give our children the best tools. I will share with you, with you one huge parenting mistake that most good parents make or many good parents make without that intention, of course, without wanting to harm their kids in any way or lead them into the wrong life direction. And before I share that with you, it's really important to know that the mission of our children is not our mission or our mission is not our children's mission. And hopefully the ideas I'll share with you will help us navigate our lives in a way where we're exemplifying not only the right example, but also the right ideas towards our children. In Parshas Mikait, it is written in Bereshit 42.1, Yaakov perceived that there were provisions in Egypt, so Yaakov said to his sons, why do you make yourself conspicuous? So we know that there was a famine gripping the region and word traveled that there was food in Egypt. People traveled from far away to purchase grain that Yosef had stored in the seven years of plenty. Yaakov Avinu also sent his sons to purchase uh, some of these foods because their supplies were running low as well. At this point, Rashi quotes a Gemara. Why do you make yourself conspicuous? Rashi explains, do not show yourself to be satiated before the descendants of Esav and Ishmael. Rashi explains, in reality, Yaakov's family had grain, still had grain at that point, but nobody else did. And Yaakov didn't want to be conspicuous about his family not being affected by hunger. In other words, he did have enough, but he didn't want other people to know that he still has, even though other people don't. He wanted also to get more food, but we may question, why would he do such a thing? Why would he, in, uh, you know, it looks like he's lying. He's pretending. Rambam poses a straightforward question to Rashi. Shouldn't the concern have been that they would be showing off to their Canaanite neighbors? And at that point, Yaakov was living in Canaan and the descendants of Esau and Yishmael had moved elsewhere. But the Rambam suggests that perhaps the concern was that the descendants of Esau and, ya and Yishmael would travel through Canaan, through Egypt, and they might notice that Yaakov had food. They would then call on their relatives and invite themselves over to dine and take and to take the food and enjoy the food. So it seems from this that Ramban, from this Ramban, that Yaakov was instructing his children to pretend to be poor and to ensure that his own relatives wouldn't take from him. How could a grandson of Yaakov Avinu, whose tent was so famous for greeting others from four corners to enjoy a meal, how could he be so stingy as to instruct, instruct his own children to pull down the shades so that their own cousins would, uh, would not eat the food, right? So this teaches us a beautiful, powerful lesson. Stick to your mission in life. And Rabbi Simcha Zisso, Broid, derives a deep lesson from the Ramban, which is, every person has to identify his particular mission in life, stick to that mission, and not try to accomplish another person's mission. What was Avraham Avinu's mission? His mission was to introduce the concept of monotheism to the world. He felt that the best way to pretend the word, to, to spread the word, was to bring each person to his home, give him a good meal, and convince him of the truth of Hashem's um, oneness in the whole world, uh, sovereignty over this world. If this meant bringing different types of people into the home, including pagans, idol worshippers, people of questionable character, then so be it, because that was his mission in life. Now, what was Yaakov Avinu's mission? Even though Chesed and Kiruv were also important to Yaakov, his primary mission was to raise his 12 sons to be the next generation, to build the next generation of Klal Yisrael. 
In order to do so, he had to protect those children from the moral and cultural decline of the general society. Yaakov could not have the children of Yishmael and, ya and uh, Esav at his table because they would negatively impact his own children. This would undermine his life's mission. So Yaakov Avinu's mindset was, actions that were noble to my grandfather, Avraham, would be wrong for me to replicate because my mission was different than his. So Rav Simcha Zissel also explains that Avraham and Sarah did not have Yitzhak until they were 190, respectively. But once he was born, they could no longer have an open house as they did before. Even Avraham and Sarah, who knew that their mission was to spread the concept of monotheism by inviting strangers into their home, could not afford to do so at the expense of those guests having a negative influence on Yitzhak. So what is the similarity between Avraham and Yaakov? Is that what is important, while it is important to bring others into your home, it cannot come at the expense of your children. And number two, Yaakov really teaches us that trying to imitate someone else's mission in life can prevent you from fulfilling your own. The Mesilas Yesharu famously opened his Sefer from the, with the importance for each person to define ma hovaso baolamo, what is his duty in his world. He does not write what is the man's obligation in this world because each person has his own mission in his own world. So it is important for us to remember a, a lot of these different ideas that I just shared with you. As parents, we want to encourage the principle that just because I did it in my life doesn't mean you have to do it. Or just because I didn't do it doesn't mean you have to do it, right? Sometimes we live through our children and that's a huge parenting mistake that a parent can make is just because I did, wasn't able to become this you know, successful businessman or I wasn't able to become a doctor or a lawyer or I wasn't able to have a house and, and live in a certain community. Now my children have to live through my dream. And that's a huge parenting mistake. So furthermore, it actually carries into our own lives as well. Sometimes we think, you know, just because she has, doesn't mean I need it too. It really doesn't mean that. So a person may need to have to live in a huge house and have a lot of big things and a lot of things and live a certain way of life. That doesn't mean I also need it. If it's good for me, I'll have it. Hashem has plenty for me. So it, it is a wrong mindset to think that just because this person has it doesn't mean now I have less opportunity to have it also. Hashem has enough for everyone. So let's not make other people's mission our mission as well. And our children see how we carry on these ideas into our own lives and live by these principles. So we don't want to carry those principles into our lives. Or someone may need daily cleaning help or cleaning help twice a week, whatever it is. And this is very much needed in their family. Or maybe their spouse is extremely picky. Or maybe they have so much going on in the house that the, the woman just really needs the, the cleaning help. And then you're talking to her and... You're wondering, I don't have as much cleaning help, or maybe what you have is older children who help out, or a flexible spouse, or a spouse that actually helps a lot. So everybody has what they need, but just because something works for this person doesn't mean I also need it in my life. I don't need to adopt somebody else's way of life and mission. I also have, you know, as a speaker, many ladies have shared with me that they feel guilty doing self-care. Why? Because... They have been brought up with the mission of a mother or a wife and caretaker and a woman who runs her home that she should always be doing and attending to her family's needs until she drops from exhaustion. And every woman must know her own needs. Time for self-care. Some need more self-care than others. So we don't need to compare generations to feel bad about ourselves. We need, you know, give yourself what you need to focus on your mission if you need more self-care, do more self-care. And there's nothing wrong with that. We just have to shift our mindset. The generations past 
has di- had different needs. We're, we're hardworking in a different way. You know, our, our job is different now. Even though we're mothers, we're wives, we're caretakers, it doesn't mean I'm less than if I'm doing self-care. And that's what I've noticed with, with the ladies who I speak to. So if I, if I need to something to something to fill my mission, then I would have it. We know that so many people have tasted success in different fields, even though someone else in the same field was able to accomplish and reach their goals in different ways. So for example, you can become a successful businessman after going to school or um, trying to be self-taught or learning from a mentor and having experience. You know, people can become successful in a field in different ways. Just because this person's mission is maybe they've uh, they've uh, accumulated wealth or inherited wealth from their, their parents or they've become successful because their parents' business has become successful doesn't mean you can't be successful. So your mission doesn't have to be their mission or the way you know to accomplish your mission doesn't have to be theirs. You know, um, so in our generation, we easily share our blessings with others also. But just like we hide our challenges and misfortunes and difficulties, the proper way really is to be modest, attribute all blessings as gifts, and look for the hidden blessings in the challenges. Keep a low pro- profile in your challenges as well as you know, your blessings, they're all from Hashem, Baruch Hashem. We want to, you know, we, we like to share with others, oh, I've become successful in this and successful in this. And unfortunately, we make other people jealous un- unintentionally. But then we don't share um, certain parts of our lives, which we're not really supposed to, our challenges, our difficulties. So let's not present a false image to other people. You know, try to keep a low profile, be grateful for your blessings, for your gifts, for your talents, because they're really all from Hashem. So I also wanted to share that as a coach, I have seen my clients struggle in life, you know, through living through the dreams of their parents, living up to their expectations and working in careers their parents only advocated for. Unfortunately, this involved a lot of suffering throughout their lives unhappiness and self unfulfillment unfortunately without intentionally harming their kids parents live through their children mistakenly let's not make the same mistake with our children let's not tell our children you know you have to be a doctor you have to be a lawyer because i need i need this type of doctor in the family later on i need to rely on someone it would be nice but we don't know what our children's mission are so let's not make that mistake of living through our children, having our mission, their mission, just like we learned from Abraham and Yaakov, just because Yaakov's grandfather was such a um, a chesed uh, chesed giver, you know, he he was so much into Kiruv and opening his doors for everyone. Doesn't mean that has to be Yaakov's mission. Yes, he can learn from him, but he doesn't have to adopt it because he had 12 sons in order uh, to, to guard them, to take care of them, to enable them to become the next generation by giving them the right tools, the right influences. So it doesn't mean he was a bad parent just because he wasn't like his grandfather. He can learn the qualities of kindness from his grandfather, but he doesn't have to be his grandfather. So one huge mistake, I wanna wrap it up, and of course give us a practical tip one huge mistake that parents mistakenly unintentionally um do as a parent and do doing during their parenting is living through their children making their mission their children's mission or having their children fulfill the mission that they couldn't fulfill you know we want to be able to give our children opportunities to fulfill their own mission, discover their own mission. Of course, we need siyad adishmaya. We need to pray for it. We need to be examples, and we need to see how our children flourish with their own gifts and talents. So the affirmation I'll leave you with is to build ourselves up with our own mission. Just because that person has it doesn't mean I have a lost opportunity. Or if it is meant to be mine, it will eventually 
find me. <coughs> Appreciating the insights of Rabbi Fran, the power of a word. Leah Brahm of being and becoming. Appreciating the insights of Rabbi Fran as well as my own. Leah Brahm of being and becoming. Awakening awareness of your greatness and potential. <laughs>